Okay, so the title of the sermon today, let me just check that everything's working. Brilliant. Everything's working. Okay, so the title of the sermon is Miracles Never Stop. Now, why did I have to do this sermon today? Well, there's a group of people, we're going to talk about them. And they're Christians. But they've got a very twisted message. They believe that miracles stopped with the apostles. And this is a very, very weird thing that kills people's faith. Okay, so we're going to do an example here. Okay, and the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem. Okay, so the number of the disciples multiplied. Is that saying that there were more and more and more disciples being made? What is it saying? Does it say that the disciples that were made also did miracles? Yes. Because Stephen was not one of the original 12. And it's saying he could perform miracles. Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. So miracles never stopped. So if somebody says to you, you know, you can't perform a miracle. There's no point in praying. There's no point in... But these people don't understand the Bible. And they're saying that God's power is limited somehow. It's a weird twisted message that's going out. But we're going to quash that today. So, the Bible says, Behold, let's go to the next one. I have to turn it on from here, right? Okay. Brilliant. Behold. The Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. So what has happened? It's said that God hasn't changed. God can still hear your prayers. His power hasn't gone. A lot of people will wonder, well, why isn't God helping me? It's a, it's, a, it's a fair, reasonable question. I'm in a situation, why isn't God helping me? Is it because I've sinned? Is it because this bad thing that's happening to me will serve the kingdom of God somehow? Will it help Christianity? If so, let the suffering happen. We're not cowards as Christians. We don't we're not scared of things that happen to us. Scared is, is the other side. Okay? So who are these people? They're called cessationists. Okay? And what does it mean? It means that spiritual gifts such as speaking in tongues, prophecy, healing, cease with the apostolic age. The doctrine was developed in the Reformation and is particularly associated, associated with the Calvinists. The people that believe in predestination, you know, the people that are going to heaven are already going, and the people that are going to hell are already going. So, you know, there's no point in anyone repenting or anything. It's a, a dumb doctrine that it's taken very, um, it's absorbed a lot of the Christian teaching and perverted it. Now, the Bible does not say this. Now, we're going to read some passages together. And you tell me in those passages where miracles have stopped. These are the verses they use in the Bible. So this is the verse. This thing does not like me. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Who knows what charity is, the actual meaning of charity? Christian love. That's what charity means. It doesn't mean, you know, giving money to poor people. That is an example of Christian love. But in general, charity means Christian love. Well done. Yeah. So it's saying Christian love is the most important thing. Charity suffers long and is kind. 
Charity envieth not. Charity boldeth not itself, is not puffed up. Christian love doesn't do these things. Now, in the New Bibles, they've changed this word to love. It's a big mistake. It's not. The love that you have for your friend or for the, the person you're with isn't the same. Christian love trumps everything. It's higher up than that. It's much higher up. It's more important. Love isn't strong enough a word to describe charity. Okay? Charity never fails. Now, does anyone see anything here where it says that miracles will stop? Morning, brother. It never says it here, does it? Charity never fails. God will not stop loving you. Okay? You will become evil and then you'll be shunned. But the love's there. Okay? Your love, charity, will never fail. There will always be Christian love in the world. It doesn't matter how many evil people, and it does say God hates people in the Bible. It, it is in the Bible. But what I'm saying is you will never actually squash the good in the world because God will always be there. Charity will never fail. Prophecies will fail. Tongues they shall cease. Where there will be knowledge, it will vanish away. But Christian love will always be there. Does anyone here see where there's no more miracles in the Bible? It doesn't say that, does it? It never says anywhere in this passage that there will be no more miracles. Now, it's interesting that people can twist this passage. You'll notice this among the Calvinists, that they will twist passages. Some of them are really good Christians as well, but they, their doctrine is in the toilet. It really is. Yeah. I liked it when something doesn't work. It means Satan's trying to stop me preaching. <laughs> yeah. Maria, you're going to have to help me. I'm sorry. Okay, this is the next one. Right. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners in different ways spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Does it say here anywhere that miracles have stopped? It never says it, does it? These are the passages they use to say that miracles have stopped. They stopped with the apostles, apparently. But it doesn't say that anyway. I looked up their verses that they use, and they're not there. Let's do another one. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? It's talking about the angels. The angels suffered. The, the, the bad angels that fell were burning hell. He's saying, so if they, they're going down to hell, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? The apostles confirmed what was said in the Bible. God also bearing them witness, because if there's a miracle, it has to come from God. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Where does it say that miracles ever stopped? It's important to go to the right church. It's important to have someone in a church that knows what they're talking about. Anybody that reads this and says that, says that miracles stopped, uh, I, I, I don't know how to help people like that. Hit the next one, please. Okay. Morning, Stephen. Morning. I'm not sure that door's big enough for you. <laughs> Guy's huge. Okay. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven. Why eleven? 
Why is one apostle missing? Well done. At this point, Judas has waxed himself. Gone. Okay? He's appeared to the eleven. We have eleven apostles at the moment. Okay? And upbraided them. Jesus has visited to them after he's risen. And he said to them, he's having a go at them. He's chastising them about their unbelief and hardness of heart. Because they didn't believe them which was seen of him after he was risen. Didn't you believe I was going to come back to life? I told you I was coming back to life. Why didn't you believe the people? Why didn't you believe Mary Magdalene and the other Marys that were there? Why didn't you believe them? So he's having a go at them. And he said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Apparently, this says that there's no more miracles. So what are we doing? Those are all the passages that you've seen that apparently say that there's no more miracles in the world. But the Holy Spirit has told you, these passages do not say anything like that. Miracles have never stopped. And they never stop after the apostles. Jesus said, notice the caveat, notice the detail here. Okay? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Not just baptized. He that believes and is baptized. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Mario, that's very strong. Very, very strong. But it's the Bible. You can't take a piece of the Bible that sounds nice and not read out the other part. We're not scared of the words of the Bible. We read them all out. These signs shall follow them that believe. Does it say just the apostles? It doesn't say that, does it? They shall cast out devils. In my name they shall cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues. Now, I was asked the other day, Mario, can you perform an exorcism? And they said it to me. And I said to them very clearly, I said to them, actually anybody can. If you read the Bible. Here it says, them that believe. It doesn't say you need a special priest, right? It doesn't say that it has to be a priest. In fact, it doesn't say any of these things. In Who's seen the film Exorcist? I mean, I've seen it. You know, it's a scary horror film from the 80s. You know, had a lot of... Uh, hmm? Well, yeah, it says based on a true story type thing. Well, here's the thing. In that film, in that film, you have to make a special application to a special type of priest who's been specially trained in exorcism. Okay? And he comes with holy water. Now, holy water is actually in the Bible, believe it or not. It's part of the Mosaic law. And they had to put holy water to see if a woman was faithful or something like that. But it had nothing to do with the New Testament. At all. It was part of the Mosaic law that Jesus fulfilled and got rid of. So, if people use holy water in a church, that's up to them. I don't mind. Okay? But it's not necessary to do anything. It serves no purpose in Christianity. Okay? You don't need it, and neither did the apostles. It just says them that believe will use in his name. Um, okay. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Doesn't mean do it deliberately. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Is it talking about future people? Them that believe. Now, people these days don't believe that they can lay hands on people and they can recover. Maybe you don't believe that you can. But you are those that believe. And people are trying to take that out of you. The devil wants to take that out of you. This belief, this faith that you have in miracles. And how does he do it? Well, what's the sneakiest way that the devil can attack you? 
through a church, they often infiltrate. They did this interview with this um, these Satanists, very famous Satanists, the LeVay people or something like that, Anton LeVay people and his family. What did he say he was doing? They said they've infiltrated the churches. Satanic people have put a, 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 a Satanist as a preacher so that they can mix up the word. They can't get rid of your faith, but they can twist it and turn it. A lot of people have realized that Christians was, uh, will remain Christian no matter what. They die hard, die in the wall. I am a Christian. The only way is to mess up their doctrine. And that's what they try and do. Okay, so after the Lord spoke to them, he was received up to heaven, sat on the right hand of God. Now, they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Now, what does that mean? That means that believers were performing miracles. You are believers. You can perform miracles. Okay, now. Notice this, because people think the disciples were just 12. Apostles, disciples, the number of disciples, followers, was multiplied. There were lots and lots of disciples, lots of people following Jesus. Okay, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians, us Greek people, causing problems, okay, Against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. It looks like the Greeks became believers immediately. And they were joining up and saying, you know, help our widows as well. So what did they do? Then the twelve, we've gone to eleven to twelve. Matthias is declared the twelfth apostle by the other disciples. Okay? It's a matter of contention if he counts as the twelve or if Paul counts as the twelve. It's a matter of contention. For me, it's Paul, but I'll go along with it. The twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, it's not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. We've got important things to do. In a church, the one person cannot do everything. I know, I've tried. I can't do everything. You need help from other people in the church. My brother here, I know you bring the water. <laughs> Uh, Maria does all the um, electronic stuff or the websites and things. we've got, you need help you need a lot of help let's go to the next one so what do we do this is how a church is supposed to work one guy doesn't declare that he's a pastor it doesn't work like that and say, I'm a pastor, everyone follow. No, that is not what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says. Wherefore, brethren, church, that you Christian group, look ye among you, pick someone among you, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, people that know what they're doing and they're very godly, whom we might appoint over this business. The church chooses the leader. Very interesting. We've had, um, what happened to the, remember Chad's church? And everyone kept going and going, I'm a pastor. I want to take over here. Do you remember that? And she kept telling me the stories and I was laughing. I couldn't stop laughing. People declared they've got a certificate on the internet or something. If God didn't choose you, he didn't choose you. Okay. This saying pleased the whole multitude. They chose Stephen. The church chose Stephen. A man full of faith in the Holy Ghost. Philip, Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon of Hormides, and Nicholas of Proselyte of Antioch. What a mouthful. Okay? They chose Stephen. Now, do you remember when I was going to take over from Mark. Do you remember that? And Mark was going around telling everyone, who do you want? Who do you think would make a good pastor? Who do you think, what do you think about Mario? What do you, and he asked about the different people. 
And the general feedback he got was Marion, me. It didn't sit well <laughs> with certain other people that thought that they should be their role. But what happened? The people chose. The people in the church said, this is how it should be. And this is how a church is supposed to be. Okay. Uh, go on. Like we said at the beginning, okay? The people of the church pray. So say I was going to step down. What would happen? You people would pray. And maybe uh, Brother Yangos or Brother Stephen or Brother Joy or Brother Tony, maybe the church would decide you would lay hands on that person, you would pray over them, and that would be the new leader. This is the biblical way of choosing a leader in a church or a follower or someone to do a particular job. Okay? Now, um, right, let's go to the next one. And what does Stephen do? He's not popular. He's popular because of the things he says, but he is unpopular because of the things he says. This is how it's supposed to be. You're not supposed to be, how can I put it? Wishy-washy. Well done. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're not supposed to be a softy, softy, softy preacher. You're not. You're supposed to say what the Bible says. Is this going to make you popular? No. If you want to be popular, go and pretend to be, what do they do? They run for mayor or something. And they're squeaky, clean, perfect people, apparently. You know, I've never done anything wrong. <laughs> The Bible doesn't work like that. God will pick broken, the weirdest last people that we would pick for certain things, okay? He has a goal at the people. Solomon built him a house. How big? The most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands. People don't want to hear this. You see, we've made this place a house of God. Does God sleep here? No. Is God limited to this place? No. It doesn't work like that. Go to the uh, next one. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me? <laughs> Saith the Lord. Or what is the place of my rest? Has not my hand made all these things? The bricks, the building, you... The things, the trees that, that you're going to use, the, the, the everything that you're going to put, even the plants that you're going to put in the church, were made by God. What are we going to do? Build a house for him to sleep? Where is the place of my rest? Do I need to sleep? No. So what do people do? They, they put too much focus on the place, believing that that's the only place where God is. If I want to find God, I'll go to that church. That's great. Except that you don't need to. You can pray to God at home. You can pray to God while you're walking down the street. You don't have to be kneeling. You don't have to be facing down, face down to the floor. You can just talk to God wherever you are. I'm not limited to a house. Now, I know why he had to tell them all these things. At this time, the temple wasn't destroyed in Jerusalem. So uh, what would happen is people, you can see, have you ever seen the videos of what happens in Israel? There's a tiny bit of Solomon's wall left, like a few bricks. And there's a guy praying to them. To, it was temple worship. You're not worshipping God. You're worshipping the temple. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> Worshipping the bricks isn't going to bring you closer to God. Okay, I, I understand where the guy is coming from. I don't, I'm not against people that try to, because a lot of people think I bash other churches. Okay, I'm trying to not destroy them. I'm trying to bring them back in line 
and undo the damage that's been done. The guy who's praying to that wailing wall, or whatever it is, in, in Jerusalem, he's praying to it because he feels godly and he's showing his love for God by doing that. When you see uh, Orthodox or, or Catholics and they're doing a special pilgrimage for their faith, okay, they're doing it because they love God and they want to show their love for him. I'm trying to say to them, you don't have to do it that way. I'm not bashing them because a lot of them are strong, strong believers. I bash things like uh, Mary worship and saint worship. But from the other side, I can see what the people are doing. They're devoted to God and they think that if they pray to these saints, they'll be closer to God. It doesn't work like that. And I wish, I want, because these people are great godly, they're halfway there. But somewhere along the line, their, their doctrine skewed and flawed. A lot of these Calvinists are, are lovely people and, and devout Christians, but their theology sucks. I wish there was another way to say it. It is diverted and twisted and wrong. And you're killing the faith of real Christians who actually believe, who need to believe in miracles. Let's go to the next one. So what happens when Stephen tells the truth? And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. So he's rebuked them, and it's a long rebuke. I haven't put it all in the sermon. But at the end of the rebuke, he says, Behold, I see the heavens open. He's not lying. And what have they done? They cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears. How many people have done that? <laughs> I mean, I'm guilty of doing it. Okay? They don't want to hear the truth about their religion. They don't want to hear the truth about maybe Islam, maybe uh, the JWs. Maybe Mormons, they want to close their ears. I've had I've spoken to, to Muslims and seen them come out of, of Islam to come to Christianity. I've spoken to JWs who come out of it and come to Christianity. We've seen many things like that. Okay? But be careful because these people are there. They don't want to hear you. And cast them out of the city and stone him. And the witness laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Saul's not a believer yet. He's not an apostle yet. You understood why I put it there. Well done. <laughs> All that to say this. Yes, he wasn't named among them. So, if miracles stopped with the apostles, and Saul's not an apostle yet, surely Saul wouldn't be able to perform miracles, right? These verses that I'm giving you show you that you can perform miracles by believing. Now, I'm going to let, I can show you miracles that have happened in my life. Things I've seen, but I've said them in other, in other sermons. I know that miracles happen when you pray. It's happened so many times. I'm not worried about babies crying because they're in the service. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay, so let's go to this uh, exorcist type situation. Okay, so it came to pass as we went to pray, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination. She's possessed. She's got a demon that's telling her things. Okay? And the person that owns her, because she was owned at the time, is making lots of money. You know, she's giving readings. She's doing, uh, she's telling the future for people, using dem uh, demons. Now, what happens? And this she did for many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, so if somebody asks me, what do you need to perform an exorcism? 
Read this verse. No holy water. No special priest. No cross needed. Okay? No big ritual. You know, where... The, you see, the exorcist film would have been very short if they actually followed the Bible. You read out one sentence and it's all over. Okay? But to cast out demons and stuff is simply this. I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. I remember the first time I faced all this supernatural stuff. I, was, uh, I wasn't a preacher at the time, but I was hanging out with these Samaritans. Um, you know the people that put the Bibles? Gideons, sorry. I was hanging out with these Gideons. And I got a phone call while I was with these Gideons. We were sitting down praying because I was going to join them. Okay? And uh, before I found out that they started giving out NIVs instead of KJV. Okay? And a woman called me. And she says, Mario, I don't know what to do. I'm being possessed. I'm seeing things and stuff like that. And I'm sitting there thinking, right, I haven't faced this before. But sooner or later, I have to face this supernatural stuff. I'm a Christian. And I'm with these Gideons. And I said to the Gideons, what's going on? I said, guys, this is the situation. This woman's called me now. She's talking about demonic possession and things like that. They were all cool about it. I thought this would freak them out. Mario, you know, you must be one of those crazy people. Get out. You know what they did? These Gideons, they sat down and said, oh, okay then, let's pray for that right now. Completely cool. Like they'd faced this problem a thousand times. You will face this problem. For you battle supernatural things. Pe things that people say don't exist, but they do. And you will have to pray at one time for someone or lay hands on them for them to be healed. And this is how it's done. Okay? Those Gideons prayed. And I didn't call the woman back. She called me back. And she said, Mario, I'm okay now. What did you do? I said to her, God helped you. We prayed and God helped you. Now this is scary stuff I'm saying. Mario, you're freaking me out with this supernatural stuff. Well, it's in the Bible. You will have to face this stuff. Maybe you think it's when you become a next level Christian or something like that. But this stuff is definitely out there. And it is stuff that any Christian can do. You don't need to call Mario. You don't need to have holy war. You don't need any of these things. Just pray for some. Let's go to the next one. Now, this is Paul. After he's come, after Jesus has visited him and called him, I am become a fool in glory. You have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you, for in nothing am I behind the very cheapest, cheapest apostles, though I be nothing. Is he calling himself an apostle here? Yeah. He says it in another passage that I didn't put in as well. Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you. All patience, signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Paul performed miracles. He didn't just cast that demon out. He performed other things. Other miracles. Now. Go to the next one. Yeah. You see, don't let the devil attack your faith. Don't let the devil make you believe that God has somehow lost his power in some way. Or that this connection that you have with God, a very special connection, is somehow lessened in some way. It never has. You've always had this ability within you. To pray for someone and they get better. To cast out demons on your own. If sometimes you want to reach out to me or the church, do it. Pastor, I'm having a rough time. Pray for me. Lots of people do that. 
They just send me a message, pray for me. Great, fantastic, I'm happy to do it. Pastor, pray for, who is it that we're praying for? Caroline Stevens and Titus, my brother Titus, whose birthday it is. Now, Sister Caroline Stevens in the UK, we know she watches her sermons sometimes. And she's fighting a battle in the UK. A great Christian woman. So yes, Caroline, we pray for you. That God be with you and fight your battles with you. We pray for our brother Costas. Lord, help him. Make him well. We pray for our brother Yangos. We pray for everyone in this church and everyone listening. Lord, strengthen these people. Heal them. Make them ready for the battle that's coming. Bible says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you'll receive them, and you shall have them. Was Jesus lying? Do we half believe the Bible? When we pray, the next time we pray, Add the special ingredient, belief. Believe that you receive. It's a very tough path for Christians to go for. They'll believe the whole Bible of Christian. A Christian will believe everything from Genesis to the virgin birth. They'll believe everything. But they will never believe. No, not never. Some of them don't believe that God will help them. That's a big mistake. You call God a liar. You call Jesus a liar. This is Jesus' words. And we believe them. So what's the special ingredient missing from when people pray? Belief. I believe that God will help me in this situation. I believe it. Now I have power inside me. And the power inside you, it makes a huge difference. It's something that will change your entire life and the entire way you look at things. It will fire you up. It will steal you for the things that are happening. What do we do now? When we leave this church today, We're going to look at things differently. We're going to walk down the street believing that God will answer our prayers. He never said he wouldn't. It's men that told you he wouldn't. It's us. It's people that told you that God wouldn't help you. The cessationists who believe that miracles have ceased. <laughs> I would always ask these people, why do you pray then, if you believe that miracles have ceased? Dear brothers and sisters, we've come to the end now. I don't want anybody listening to this sermon, not for one week to have faith. I don't want them ever in their life to waver like this, that God's not with them, that God can't help them. Maybe sometimes you will suffer, but sometimes the suffering you do will wake someone else up. With Stephen, they took their garments off while they were beating him and stoning him, and Saul was looking after their clothes while he was doing it. But here's the thing, Saul saw what happened to Stephen. And something there stayed. Something there was, wait a minute, he was consenting. He was agreeing, stone him, stone him. He says it in a later passage. But he never picked up the stone himself. Why? He was capturing Christians and handing them in, Saul Paul. He was doing that. But something wasn't right. 
and God saw something in him that he didn't see in himself. Just like it can happen to you. Maybe you don't think you're good enough. Maybe you don't think you have enough faith. But God sees something very valuable in you. That's my son. Being part of the church service. <laughs> Let us pray. My God in heaven, who is like you, who can do all things, who can answer all prayers, who sent his son for us. Lord, increase our faith. Increase the faith of the people listening and your Christians and your followers around the world. Lord, increase the faith of the Christians that suffer as missionaries. Those that are suffering now. Those that falter and believe themselves unworthy. That Satan tries to take their faith from them. Because they believe they're unworthy. Lord, pick them back up. Give them the faith that they may do your will. Blessed be your name. Amen. For those joining us online, uh, if you have any questions, please contact us. Uh, we're happy to take your call. If you don't believe that you're going to heaven, definitely contact us. If you want to ask any questions about Christianity, about being baptized, about anything, please contact us. God bless you and have a blessed week.